Thank you. So now we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Marianne Layden, uh, live from Pennsylvania. Welcome. Can, is, can you see us all right and hear us okay? Okay. I, I, can, I can see you. And okay. Thank well, you, you so you, much for inviting me to, to speak, and um, I appreciate your interest in this topic. Um, I'm going to present my case that the society has become pornified. By that, I mean that sex has become a product, that the body is now seen as a commodity. If it's a product, you can sell it, and if you can sell it, you can steal it. The sexual exploitation industry, which includes pornography, strip clubs, prostitution, and sex trafficking, and the sexual violence and sexual abuse uh, phenomena include sexual harassment, rape, and incest. The sexual exploitation industry and the sexual abuse phenomena are a seamless, interconnected continuum which cannot be separated. I want to talk for a minute about learning. Now, psychologists have studied the phenomenon of learning, and what they find is that pictures are compact carriers of meanings, that learning is deeper if you're rewarded for the behavior, and the orgasm is very rewarding. Learning is deeper when we have role models that are showing us the behavior, and if those role models are rewarded. Learning is deeper in the presence of arousal, and antisocial behaviors are learned and expressed more when you think you're anonymous and no one can see you. Therefore, pictures, rewards, role models, and arousal and anonymity all produce greater learning, which are all phenomena present in Internet pornography, making pornography, especially Internet pornography, a perfect learning environment, except for the fact that everything it teaches you is a lie. Psychologists now call Internet pornography the new crack cocaine. And what is it teaching us? Well, the first thing it's teaching us is permission-giving beliefs. Permission-giving beliefs are beliefs that tell us what I'm doing is normal, doesn't hurt anybody, and that everybody is doing it. Therefore, I don't need to change my behavior, and those who have a problem with my behavior are wrong and crazy and prudish. For example, some permission-giving beliefs believe all men go to prostitutes. All people want sex with all people all the time. Women enjoy being raped. Women enjoy degrading sex. Children like to have sex with adults. It also produces miseducation about sexuality. Pornography tells us that sex is not about intimacy, caring, love, or respect. It's not about marriage or having children, that sex is recreational, that you don't need to know your partner, that sex with strangers is the most intense and the best kind of sex, that sex is adversarial, that pornography is a one-way street that focuses only on your own pleasure, and that there's no need to consider the needs or feelings of others, that sex is a male entitlement, that men need sex, and that women's bodies are just sexual entertainment for men. Pornography includes performers that never say no and never reject sexual advances. This increases unrealistic expectations about others, entitlement to sex, frustration with others who say no, and a reduced awareness and a skill of noticing the unwillingness of partners. From this point on, I'm going to talk about research findings. I can't talk about the more than 200 studies that have been done on this, or the tens of thousands of subjects, but let me give you some of the findings. In the research, we found that men who use pornography think that women enjoy rape, that she got what she wanted when she was raped, they're more accepting of the rape myth, which is a set of beliefs that are untrue about rape, and they also believe that rapists deserve less time in prison. They have an adversarial view of sex, they have more callous sexual beliefs, they're more accepting of violence against women, they use more sexual terms to describe women, they see women as sex objects, and they have reduced support for the women's liberation movement. They rate their partners as less attractive, are less satisfied with their partner's sexual performance, have a greater desire to have sex without involvement, emotional involvement, have a greater desire of an acceptance of sex outside of marriage for married people, are less child-centered during marriage, and less desiring of female children more willing to have sex with individuals who are 13 to 14 years old, more sexually attracted to children, less likely to think that pornography ne needs to be restricted from children. The increasing use of pornography is related to higher psychopath scores. Those are the thinking effects. The behavioral effects are these. Sexual dysfunction in men who use pornography, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, retarded ejaculation, especially in younger men. In one study, 58% of the male participants average age 25 had erectile dysfunction with women, but not with pornography. The recent brain image studies show us that 
Pornography users have what's called teen brain, impulse centers more active than the rational centers. Cocaine brain, that is, pornography produces a similar brain pathway as cocaine, have less gray matter, less brain sensitivity to sexual stimuli, and less brain connectivity. They have more sex partners, are less attracted to their sex partners, are less interested in actual sex with their partners, and ask their partners to act out scenes in pornographic films. They have more affairs if they're married, are more likely to prostitute women. In fact, in one study, 25% of the 19 to 21 year old males said that they had either already prostituted a woman or planned to in the future. The more pornography these males used, the more likely they were to prostitute a woman or say they would in the future. And those who prostituted women were more likely to engage in non-consenting sex. Men who go to strip clubs are more likely to engage in non-consenting sex. Men who use pornography engage in more behavioral aggression, are more likely to sexually abuse partners whom they battered, use violent sexual fantasies to get themselves aroused, and are more likely to sexually harass women, more likely to engage in date rape, stranger rape, marital rape, verbally coerced sex, physically coerced sex, use drugs and alcohol to coerce sex. The earlier male children are exposed to pornography, the more likely they are to engage in non-consenting sex. There's a greater use of pornography among juvenile sex offenders, adult sex offenders, child molesters, incest offenders, and men who are convicted of using child pornography later admit that they had sexually abused children as well. The diagnosis of pedophilia is more found in child pornography users than even in child rapists. The three factors identified connected with sexual violence are hostility toward women, a belief that sex is casual, non-intimate, recreational, and adversarial, and the use of pornography. U.S. statistics are horrific. One in eight women are raped. 25% of college females experience a rape or an attempted rape. 50% of women are sexually harassed in their lifetime. And 38% of females have been sexually molested by 18. The effects on women are these. Women exposed to pornography are more likely to accept the rape myth, have more sexual fantasies that involve rape, and think that rapists deserve less time in jail. They also have reduced support for the women's liberation movement. They're more negative about their bodies, think their male partners are more critical of their bodies, and they have less sex. The more pornography a young adult female uses, the more likely she is to be a victim of non-consenting sex. Let's look at the research on kids. Kids that are exposed to sexualized media engage in oral sex, anal sex, sexual intercourse, have more negative attitudes toward condoms, have not used con contraception in the last intercourse, have not used contraception in the last six months, have earlier initiation of sex, have more sex partners, have had more than one sex partner in the last three months, have sex more frequently, have a strong desire to conceive, and in fact are more likely to get pregnant, have engaged in more sexual harassment, have engaged in more non-consensual sex, more likely to test positive for chlamydia, use alcohol and other substances in their last sexual intercourse, have higher sexual permissiveness scores, and less progressive gender role attitudes. But the philosopher Roger Scruton has said from his point of view, the damage that pornography causes is that it threatens the loss of love in a world where only love brings happiness. Thank you.